here we have number eight. So it says solve using the square root property. So the squared term is already by itself. So I'm just going to take the square root on both sides and I get three X minus two without the square equal to plus or minus the square root of 30. Then I'm going to solve for X by adding two to both sides. But these are not like terms, so the positive two would just go in front of the plus or minus. And then I will divide by three on both sides. And so you end up with this expression that unfortunately cannot be simplified. So I'm going to have B as my answer because it's the only one that includes both as a solution. The number nine says solve the equation of the square root property. <laughs> and so for this same one, we're gonna take the square root of both sides. And that means that the little square will go away, leaving us with just z plus 9. On this side, we'll get this plus or minus square root of negative 49. Now, the negative does have to come out as an imaginary i. And then there is actually a square root of 49, so we can simplify that as well. It would be plus or minus 7i. Then we have to minus 9 on both sides, but because these are not like terms, you just write the minus 9 in front of the plus or minus symbol. And so then here it says separate your answers with comma. So you have two answers. You have negative 9 plus 7i. And then you have negative 9 minus 7i. And those are the two solutions for that problem. Now for number 10, it's solve using the quadratic formula. So I have to remember that A is equal to one, B is equal to positive three, and C is equal to negative two. And if you don't memorize the quadratic formula, make sure you include it on your note sheet, okay? So here it would be negative B plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C all over two A. So this becomes negative three plus or minus that is nine plus eight, which is 17 over two. Here it says simplify your answer, type an exact answer using radicals as needed. And then use a comma to separate your answers. So my answers are gonna be negative three plus square root of 17 over two, and negative three minus square root of 17 over two. Number 11 says solve the equation using the quadratic formula. Problem here is, is it's not equal to zero. So we will have to minus two x and add five to both sides. So the equation becomes x squared minus two x plus five equal to zero. Then that means a is one, b is negative two, and c is five. So we get x equals, and I forgot that here. So x equals those guys. Um, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get positive 2 plus or minus 4 minus 20, which is negative 16 over 2. Now the square root of 16 is 4, and if it's a negative, it means it's going to be imaginary. So this is 2 plus or minus 4i over 2 which is the same as two over two plus or minus four i over two, which is one plus or minus two i. So in here, my answers are gonna be one plus two i and one minus two i. Now, um, for number 12, we have solved the following equation using the quadratic formula again. Now remember, it's always best to have your squared term positive so in this particular case, it's negative, so I wanna move it over so that it will become a positive 2x squared. So this equation will become zero equals positive 2x squared minus 7x plus nine. So a is equal to two, b is equal to negative seven, and c is equal to nine. So we got x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get positive 7 plus or minus 
Um, let's see there, we will have positive 49 minus 72 is a negative 23 over four. This will come out as an I, but unfortunately, um, square root of 23 does not reduce. And so it says here, type an exact answer using radicals, express complex numbers in terms of i's. So what am I gonna type there in the box? I'm gonna type in seven plus square root of 23 i and put each one over four, okay? Then do the other one, seven over four plus square root of 23 over four i. Actually not plus. One should be plus and one should be minus. And this is what I would type in here, okay? I kept forgetting to circle all of my answers, but um, in my math lab, as long as you're um, typing them in there, it's fine. In uh, On the test, make sure you circle them on your paper and that you select the correct answer on the test. You will not earn credit for a problem if it is not completed on your paperwork and you will not re um, receive credit for a problem if the problem was not answered on the test itself, okay? So number 13 says solve the equation, and here we have fractions. We have two different denominators, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply each fraction by that common denominator, which includes both factors of the denominators. So then here these cancel, the three cancels. I end up with three x plus six times x minus two. Here I end up with just minus 12 x once I multiply that. Here I end up with three x times x minus two. So if we multiply this out, bring down the minus 12 x, distribute this, so these two terms will cancel, and if I minus 3x on both sides, they actually cancel as well. So what I have left is negative 12 minus 12x equal to negative 6x. And so you want to get the variables on one side, the constants on the other, and then you can divide. So I'm actually going to add 12x to both sides and that would give me a positive 6x, then I'm gonna divide by six, I get negative two, and then if I try to plug negative two into the denominators, as long as it doesn't make any of the denominators zero, this is in fact an answer, okay? So since I got negative two, and negative two minus two is negative four, that's not zero. So this is my answer, negative two. Now for number four, is very similar but they want me but like finding the common denominator means I have to factor this first and so then I notice that x and x minus 2 are the two distinct factors so I'm going to take my fractions and I'm going to multiply them by x and x minus 2 And I'm going to use the factored version of this denominator just so that we can clearly see that the x and the x minus 2 cancel. Here the x's cancel and here the x minus 2's cancel. So you end up with 3x plus 1 times x. Here you end up with 4 times x minus 2. And here you just end up with minus 8. And then if I distribute x, I get 3x squared plus x. If I distribute the positive 4, I get positive 4x minus 8. I do have a quadratic, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides. And that actually gives me 3x squared, and if I combine these, plus 5x equal to 8, negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So I can, fact, I can solve this by factoring. So I'm going to factor out the x they have in common. I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. And then I'm going to solve. This one has a little bit more steps. Negative 5 thirds, whereas this one's already by itself. So I have two answers here. 
However, if I plug in negative 5 thirds here, this will not be zero. If I plug in negative 5 thirds here, it will not be zero. And if I multiply a non-zero number times a non-zero number, it would also not be zero. So negative 5 thirds is a good answer. Zero, however, if I plug it into this denominator, I will get zero in the denominator. Therefore, zero should not be included in the solution set at all. This is a bad answer. One of those, those ones that are called an extraneous solution, right? It's just an extra solution that comes out, but it's not actually a solution to the equation. Number 15, the only denominator I see here is x minus 6. So I'm going to multiply each term by x minus 6. So that will cancel these denominators. I get 6x equal to 9 times x minus 6 plus 2x squared. If I distribute that, And I do have a squared, so if I minus 6x on both sides, I get 0 equals 3x minus 54 plus 2x squared. Before I can factor that, I need to put it in the proper order. And then 2 times 54 is 108. So I'm going to say 1 times 108, 2 times 54, 3 times... 36, 4 times 27, um, 5 won't work, 6, 6 and 18, 7 does not work, 8 does not work, 9 is 12, 10 doesn't work, 11 doesn't work, and 12 is already here, so this is all of them. Um, 2 times a negative 54 should be a negative 108. So the middle term is positive, which means all these numbers should be positive. But in order for me to get a negative 108, these guys would have to be negative. And which one of these gives me a positive 3? It would be this one. So I would have to write 2x squared minus 9x plus 12x minus 54. These guys have an x in common. These guys can be divided by 6. They have a 2x minus 9 in common, leaving me with x plus 6. Um, and remember, this equation was equal to 0. So now I can take each factor and equal them to 0. So here if I add 9, and then if I divide by 2, here if I minus 6, I get these two answers as solutions. Now. If I plug in 9 halves here and here, it will not give me 0 in the denominator. So 9 halves is a good solution. If I plug negative 6 in here and here, I'll get negative 12. Which means negative 6 is also a good solution. So I do have two solutions to this equation. Now for number 16, this says solve the equation and it's a radical equation. In order for me to solve a radical equation, I do have to have the radical by itself on one side. And I'd rather have that radical be positive. Currently, it's negative. So I'm going to add it to the other side so that it can become a positive. Then x will be all by itself on the left, and 0 plus anything will be that exact same thing. Then I can square both sides to eliminate the radical giving me x squared equal to 8 minus 7x. The x squared term is positive, so I want to minus 8 and add 7x to both sides. So that would give me 0 on the right-hand side, and on this side I'm going to put these guys in order. So x squared, positive 7x, and then minus 8. Now here you have a 1, so 1 minus 8 is minus 8. And that's all the factors that give me. Now, the bigger one would have to be positive, but because this is negative, that means the smaller one would be negative. And this is the pair that seems 
to work. So I would have x squared minus 1x plus 8x minus 8. Factor out an x on this side. Factor out an 8 on that side. And we get x minus 1 in common and x plus 8 still equal to 0. And if I set each factor equal to 0, I'm going to have to add 1 to both sides. Here I'm going to have to minus 8 to both sides. And so I get two answers, 1 and negative 8. But with radicals, you have to check the whole thing. So first I'm going to check 1. And so 7, 8 minus 7 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. And that does, in fact, equal 0. So 1 is definitely an answer. Now let's check negative 8. So here we get 72 positives, um, 7 times 8 is 56. Positive 56 and a positive 8 is going to give me 64. The square root of 64 is 8, but negative 8 minus 8 is negative 16. That does not equal 0. So for this problem, negative 8 is not a solution. So I only have one solution, and it happens to be the number 1.